I like to think of this as a set of tools, right? Nanoscience as a set of tools, nanotechnology as a set of tools. So, you know, I can, I can build something using a conventional toolbox, um, you know, screwdriver and hammer and pliers and stuff, and I can build something with my hands. And that we would consider a very, you know, like a bulk material or a bulk object. What I see nanoscience and nanotechnology as being able to do is to give us a new toolbox to work with. Okay, so we're talking about smaller tools to build smaller machines. And that brings us back to being able to make extremely small particles that can interact with um, the, the, the world around us in you know, very new and very different ways and very useful ways. My research is on conducting polymer nanomaterials. And you can think of it sort of as bringing together two different fields. So there's conducting polymers and there's nanoscience. Okay? Um, Conducting polymers are kind of plastic, but they happen to conduct electricity. What I am doing is uh, looking at them from the nanoscale perspective. All right, so I think of it sometimes as uh, teaching an old dog some new tricks. Conducting polymers are pretty well known, and the one I specifically work with is called polyaniline. It's been around forever. Uh, it's been under pretty, pretty intense study for the last several decades. Uh, but it, uh, for a long time, not as any kind of nano material. Nobody really thought of it that way. Uh, in the last couple of years, maybe in the last five years or so, six years, uh, it's been discovered that it's really quite easy to make polyaniline into a, or to prepare polyaniline as a nano material, um, specifically as nanofibers. So fiber, think of it as something that's long but thin. So in this case, we're talking about fibers that are a few micrometers long, and less than 100 nanometers in diameter. The thing that's interesting to me very much is the morphology, the size and the shape of, the, of these nanoparticles. Now, in this case, they're fibers, that was, that was, so they have a fibrous morphology. Some of them are smooth, some of them are rough. It depends on the, how they're prepared and what kind of treatment they're brought through. The conducting polymer nanofibers are just bundles of those polymer strands. Okay, so what I'm trying to do, and, or maybe uncover, are some ways to modify the strands, change the, the chemical, structure, chemical structure of the strands, so that uh, I can controllably alter the morphology of the nanomaterial. Something else that, um, that has kind of grown out of that recently, so conducting polymer nanomaterials is my main field of study, um, but there's a lot of interest in hybrid nanomaterials. What that means, what I, or what I mean by that is bringing in uh, several kinds of nanoparticle and combining the useful properties of each of them. Okay, so two things that come together to make something better. Mm -hmm. So I'm working with the conducting polymers uh, and combining them with metal nanoparticles, like gold nanoparticles. All right. And um, the, the metal particles are smaller than the, the, the polymer nanofibers. So you know you, how you can think of it is um, like a, a pretzel and salt, okay, right? So you have like a long pretzel and the, the salt is dotting the surface of the pretzel, all right? So these small metal particles decorating the surface of the polymer nanofibers. Um, and what I'm trying to do is optimize the interaction of the metal with the polymer. The particular application that we were first thinking of, so uh, that, that a colleague and I were thinking of, was um, monitoring glucose levels in the blood. All right? So this would be like a, a sensor that um, a person with diabetes could use to measure or monitor their blood glucose, because diabetes is, you know, it can result in really dangerously high blood glucose. Okay, so you want a way to quickly and easily um, measure those levels. In my case, what we're looking at is how easy it is to fabricate the sensing material. Okay, so the, um, the polymer nanofiber with the gold nanoparticles is actually two-thirds of uh, a sensing material. The third part is um, an enzyme called glucose oxidase that directly uh, interacts or reacts with glucose. So it's a three-component system. Um, but what we're interested in right now is can we optimize the the, uh, the polymer and the metal nanoparticle uh, part of it. Uh, and what we're trying to do is take the fabrication of the sensing material down from several steps to a single step. 
simple. So if it's easier to make, you can do it you know, more, well, more easily and perhaps more quickly. Um, and we think ultimately the, the, the method we're working on is going to improve the, um, the, the sensitivity of the sensor, so mm -hmm. a better sensor.